Oh, yang tu Jangan lupa subscribe Ching 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 Hi and Assalamualaikum So today our group will be present on Tax Administration and GST and SST in Malaysia Our group consists 5 members The first one is Siti Sarah Zulhamidi I'm Nurhayani Suhaili Next Nusha Zwani Mak Rasid Nur Hayrunisha Abdul Rashid And the last one is Mama Afiz Zulkanain Abdul Malik So I will explain more on the assessment of resident status of a company in Malaysia For Section A, Subsection 1, Subsection A, the Hindu joint family is a resident in Malaysia for the basis year for a year assessment if the manager of Karta is resident for that basis year. The meaning of Hindu joint family is what in any system of law prevailing in India is known as Hindu joint family. For Section A, Subsection 1, Subsection B, the companies of person not being a Hindu joint family is carrying on business is resident in Malaysia for a year of assessment at any time during the basis year the management and control of its business or any of its business are exercised in Malaysia for section A subsection 1 subsection C a com any other company or body of person not being a Hindu joint family is resident in Malaysia for the basis year for a year assessment at any time during the basis year the management are exercised in Malaysia by its director or other controlling authority. For section X, subsection 2, uh, the resident status to continue when established is a company is resident in Malaysia for a given year of assessment. It also considered a resident in Malaysia for each subsequent year of assessment until contrary is proof. So I will explain on distinction between resident and non-resident of a company. For the scope of charge for resident is a company that Acquiring business of banking, insurance, shipping, and air transport, the income accrued or derived in Malaysia. Well, for non-resident, income accrued or derived in Malaysia. For derivation of dividend in Malaysia, for resident, the dividend and distribution by resident company in basis year are deemed to be derived from Malaysia. For non-resident, the dividend and distribution by the non-resident company is, mal is not Malaysia source dis dividend. For double taxation relief for resident is applicable, while for non-resident is not applicable. So that's all for me. I will pass to the next presenter, which is Siti Sarah. Thank you. So I am Sarah and I would like to present to you guys the procedure on the self-assessment system or SAS for a company to comply. Firstly, the taxpayer or the company are required to complete the written form to IRB or Inland Revenue Board. Secondly, they also need to submit the written form by the required dates. However, there will be no notice of assessment will be sent to the taxpayer. Thirdly, the taxpayer will have to compute their own tax. Fourthly, they also, to make, they also need to make a full of payment at the time of filling their tax return. Fifthly, at the same time, the taxpayer are also required to estimate the tax to be paid for the current year. Last but not least, they also need to make a monthly payment during the year based on the estimation. Okay, next, I will present about the penalties and offenses due to disobey SAS. Okay, there are three types of penalties. The first is the penalty for failure to furnish the tax estimates. The company which failed to file in the estimated tax payable will subject to a penalty based on the following table. Okay, if the company have 500 and below of estimated tax payable, so they will be compound around 300 ringgit. If 501 to 1 million, and the compound will be 500 ringgit. If 1 million and 1 and above, they will be compound around 1000 ringgit. Okay, secondly, the penalty for failure to submit tax return. First, the tax payable 
will be liable to a fine 200 to 2000 secondly the imprisonment for a term not exceeding 6 months of both thirdly the director general may require the person to pay a penalty equal to terrible the amount of tax or additional tax which is payable for that year okay last but not least the failure to remit tax payable will result in IRB imposing a penalty equivalent to 10% on the balance of tax payable. If still not paid after 60 days, a further 5% penalty will be imposed. So, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Nankar Alicia Mitabri Rashid and my ID number is MDA1901-004. So today I'm going to explain and uh, present about IRB practice for company to be resident in Malaysia. So, what is IRB practice for company to be resident in Malaysia? You need to apply to the respective assessment branch for issue the certificate of residence. Usually we call is uh, usually we call as COR. Okay, how to be applied? COR can be applied manually or through the online portal which is e-residence. You can google as e-resident.hasil.gov.my okay. The third one is tax residence status can be easily performed based on its prior year tax return which is form C. It is included in form C. Okay. So we move to the next one. Which is So, the next one is what type of tax return used by the company. So, uh, mm, okay, the next one is what types. The next one is what types of tax return from used by the company for the submission of income tax. So, under SAS, which is Self Assessment System, company required to determine and submit in Form CP204. New company must be submit CP204 within three months once started the business. When the company first commence operation during the first period, the estimate of tax payable must be submit to IRB within three months from the date of commencement of the business and not late, not late than 30 days. Estimation cannot be less than 85% of previous one and then estimation cannot be less than of 85% of tax payable for receiving years of assessment. So the next, the second last is SME do not do need to submit CP204 within two uh, within first two years of assessment and the SME first commence operation in a year of assessments. assessment. The SME is not required for finish an estimate of tax payable or make installment payment for two years. So that's all. And then we move to Siti Sarah for explain about procedure uh, under the self-assessment system, which is SAS, be, uh, for company to comply. Okay. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. My name is Nusha Zwani with Timar Rasid. So today I would like to continue the presentation of Transaction 2 which is my part is GST and SST in Malaysia. So I will um, I will explain more about the GST in Malaysia and for the SST, I will pass to um, Hafiz. So this is the the this is um, the point that I want to explain. The first one is what is the good what is the GST and SST. The second one is the timeline of history of GST and SST. The third one is the differences of GST and SST in Malaysia. Fourth, the competition of SST and GST in Malaysia. 
Five is conclusion, which is better useful in Malaysia. So this is the timeline of tax in Malaysia. From nine, in year 1972, sales tax were in, was, in, was introduced. Then followed by 1975, the service tax. Uh, in 2015, the goods and services, which is uh, the GST. And 2018, sales and service tax until now. So, um, in 2018, uh, until now, we use, we still use the sales and service tax uh, in Malaysia, okay, with the with the tax rate eleven uh, percent. Okay, so this is um, the old sales and service tax. In sales tax, sales tax was introduced on the night on the twenty ninth February nineteen seventy two as a single stage consumption tax. Levied, charged, and paid on goods manufactured in Malaysia and imported. So, the example of goods manufactured in Malaysia, such as the textiles or um, the cars, uh, the cars which is brand of uh, proton and imported. Uh, next one is the service tax. Oh, oh uh, for the sales tax, the, uh, they, uh, we use the flat rate of 10%. So, next is service tax. Service tax was introduced on the 1st March 1975 as a single stage consumption tax, leave it, charge it, charge and paid on specific services provided by a taxable person in Malaysia, which is the flat rate is 6%. So, uh, this one is the... the how the implement how the how they implement of uh, the GST and SST in Malaysia. So next is the historical of the goods service goods and service tax. The first one is the concept behind the GST was invented by French French tax official in the 1950s. Another country is known as value added tax, but in Malaysia we use uh, SST. Okay, uh, next is more than 160 countries applies this uh, GSD, include U European Union and ASEAN countries practice this GSD. Last one, 90% of world population live in countries with uh, VAT, which is a value added tax, and GSD, goods and service tax. Next, this is the goods and uh, this is the goods and service tax in Malaysia. First is most of the goods and service such as uh, for the necessities especially will be charged a tax rate of 6% at every stage of the supply chain. So um, next one is the types of GST. The types of GST divided by three standard rated GST. And last one is exempted rated GST. So, uh, as you guys know, GST is uh, as you guys know, GST uh, was uh, will charge uh, in goods manufactured in Malaysia and imported. So, uh, this is uh, in Malaysia. Our tax system involves several different indirect tax which is first import duty second export duty third government sales tax fourth seventh service tax and five excise duty so first import duty import duty on goods brought in the country on goods brought in the country such as uh, uh, we uh, as a Malaysian import Malaysian send the goods to the other countries so this is we call uh, the import duty goods brought into the country so next is export duty export duty on goods produced for the sales outside the country third government sales tax fourth service tax and five is exercise duty so the introduction goods and service tax gst with effect from 1st April 2015, it replaced sales tax and service tax, which is um, SST. So, sales tax and service tax ceased operation on 31st 
uh, March 2015. The transitional provisions are provided in GST Act 2014 and the repeal sales tax 1972 and service tax was in year of 1975. The concept of GST is input tax and output tax. So, for your information, GST is also known as value added tax. At each taxable period, input tax is deducted from the output tax. The value added is payable to RMC. So, next, this is the scope of charge. The scope of charge uh, means that uh, the GST shall be levied and charged on the taxable supply of goods and services made in the course of furtherance of business in Malaysia by a taxable person. GST is also charged on the importation of goods and services. So, um, um, for example, a taxable supply a supply a taxable supply is a supply which is a standard rated or zero rated. As them and out of the scope, supplies are not taxable supplies. Next, GST is to be levied and charged on the value of the supply. Third, GST can only be levied and charged if the business is registered under GST. A business is not liable to be registered if its annual turnover of taxable supplies does not reach the prescribed threshold. So the last one is therefore such businesses cannot charge and collect GST on the supply of goods and services made to their customers. Nevertheless, businesses can apply to be registered voluntarily. So this is the types of GST in Malaysia. First, out of scope supply. The second one, taxable supply and third is exam supply. So Let's go. Uh, let's um, go one by one. First is out of scope supply. First, provision of goods or services outside the ambit GST Act 2014. It has no GST implication. Refer to service provided by government, investment activities, and others. So next is taxable supply. So taxable supplies will apply to taxable supply which is zero rated, uh, zero percent or six percent. Last one is exempt supply. What is exempt supply? The supply goods and services that are exempt from the imposition of GST. The notable example like uh, interest in home and medical uh, or education services. So, um, the overview of GST supplies model. First, standard rated. Second, zero rated. Third is exam duty. So, this is uh, the example for the standard rated GST at 6%. It will, in it will um, incur uh, for manufacturer, wholesaler, retailer and we as a consumer. Okay, let's let's uh, let's take a look for the manufacturer. The manufacturer claims back the GST, but the wholesaler claims back the GST from the uh, claims back the GST. The retailer also claims back the GST, but the consumer pays the six percent GST only. Okay, that's um, the the flow for the standard rate of GST. So, GST in Malaysia, um, <coughs> this is the manufacturing, retailer and customer. So, when the manufacturing go to the retailer, this, we, this is we call the business purchase. Also, the tax invoice GST will charge at the 6%. But a retailer go to the customer, the, this is we call as supply of goods services. But uh, when the um, when the retailer when the retailer provide the when the re, when the retailer provides the goods and services to the customer, it will charge also the tax invoice six at six percent. From manufacturing to retailer, uh, we call as input tax. Retailer to customer, we call as output tax. So this is the calculation for GST six. Divide by 100 plus 6, uh, the total is 106. Divide, uh, multiply by price, and you will get the output tax. Output tax means that you will pay the you will pay the tax. Okay. Okay.
Okay, so uh, this is the overview classification of GST, zero rated items and exam and items. So agriculture for agriculture products, paddy and various fry, various fresh vegetables, beef, mutton, swine, fish, salted fish, prawns, cuttlefish, and so on. Rice, sugar, table table salts, plain flour. Okay, selected poultry water for this those, those method. So this is the zero rated items for GST, no charges. So uh, for the SM SM item like public transportation, bus, taxi, luxury, um, in excludes the luxury or export taxi, toll highway or or bridge, land for residential, private healthcare and education. This is the example for SM item of GST. So, so that's all from me. I will pass uh, the further explanation about the SST to Hafiz. Thank you. Okay guys, for my part, I will cover about SST 2.0. What is SST 2.0? SST 2.0 uh, is include a service tax and sales tax. For the service tax, um, service tax that is a tax charge and live on the taxable service provided by the taxable person in Malaysia in the cost and furtherance of business. The fair rates of service tax is 6%. For the sales tax, a single state take tax live on the imported and locally manufactured goods either at the time of importation or at the time the goods are sold. Uh, otherwise disposed of by the manufacturers. Okay, let's move it for the next. Mm -hmm. This is a calculation for SST. Okay, what we can see that SST are uh, actually covers on manufacturing only because of SST we um more to manufacturers. For the supplier, uh, which is a uh, initial cost of the goods sold, so we not include the SST because uh, it's not provided. For the retailer, fifty percent margin, and also we not charge for SST. And for the cons consumer, also we not charge for SST. For the price of SST, uh, we uh, allow RM twelve ringgit because of the manufacturer. So the uh, custom just collect. 12 ringgit from the sums up from 318 ringgit from the consumer which is consumer just paid 380 ringgit including a uh, SST 12 ringgit from the upper from the manufacturing cost okay let's for, for comparison SST and GST for the comparison of SST and GST of scope of charge SST is prescribed service provided carrying on the provision of the services to the customer in Malaysia for the JST and any supplies of goods and services made in Malaysia which is um uh, for supplies of the goods or service made like um, we going to the restaurants we have a GST 6 percent for the SSC they have a speech uh, prescribed service um they only have their own services for the example a tax server service import taxable for the example for gsc is taxable supply and export supply only for the taxable company more to manage factor retailer and certain industry for gsc they includes all but exceeding 500,000 will apply GST only for uh, below 500,000 uh, they not apply for GST for the GST 6% okay okay for the comparison SST and GST of the rate multiple street covering different categories of goods and services which is SST they divide um, like sales tax and service tax sales tax uh, their, for the sales tax their rate is 10% for the service tax is only 6% and for GST the uh, rate is flat rate 6% on the goods and services for the concept of SST SST imposed on the output stage but 
for the concept of GST, GST is value added uh, and multi stage tax. For the last comparison is pricing methodology. For SST, price exclusive for SST as it operates as an add on to the selling price. But for the GST, it exclusive uh, the price with GST. The lastly, for the comparison for the cost between SST and GST, that we can see that at the SST, if you they just cost only 100 ringgit and GST only uh, same 100, uh, 100 ringgit. But why the cost is 10% and the ring is 6% for GST and 10% for SST? It is because it is a, it is a sale tax for SST and GST uh, 6% because it's a flat rate. For the second one is 20% margin. It just seems like um, GST, but they have added uh, 6% of GST, which is 793 cents. For the um, retailer, that we can see that they also have a 20% margin, and GST also have 20% margin, but they still include a 6% GST, nearing at 70 cents. For the last, for consumer, we can sums up. We can sums up that. Um, the total is uh, 158 ringgit and 40 cent and uh, for the GST is 171 ringgit and 49 cents that um, for the SST the tax will charge about 10 ringgit for the consumer and for GST is more uh, lowest which is narrowing at 70 that we can see that GSC is more better than SSC because the flat rate they have a what we call um the same rate uh, for SST we can see that they have a divide with between sales and service tax so I think this all for my parts if you um likes our video we you can share and subscribe our channel so uh, today we have a uh, sponsored by nisha we have a web mini waffle bites so if you're hungry you can uh whatsapp nisha to buy it or you can i will provide the number phone at the link i hope that you can learn something from our presentation that we provide from us and Danny, do you have anything to say about our presentation? Um, after you guys watch this video, you guys can implement this uh, for your in your in your real life. Sure. I hope you gain something and you can apply. Uh, like what you see, so uh, you can subscribe and comment below. Don't forget to subscribe our channel and don't forget to buy click the button like okay don't forget to buy a tap by Kenny and don't forget to buy a mini wafer for the bikes from Indonesia and don't forget to buy my cookies also so I hope thank you you guys enjoy yeah, you guys enjoy thank you for watching bye bye